And joining us now on the interview, Clifford Orwin, professor of political theory at the University of Toronto and distinguished visiting fellow of the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. Welcome back to TVO. Thank you. Good to have you here. Let us talk about, uh, first of all, some of the themes that you raised in a piece that you recently did for the op-ed page of the Globe and Mail. In a nutshell, you are arguing in this piece that multiculturalism as a concept is confused. How come? Because of the ambiguity of the term culture. In its original meaning, culture meant education. And we still use it that way when we talk about a cultured person or a cultivated person. But the term had a long history. And by the end of the 19th century, it had been confiscated by cultural anthropologists, a cultural anthropologists because of their redefinition of this word culture. And their culture came to mean the distinctive set of practices, so I would say the way of life of a given people or tribe. So no, no connection with the notion of, of, of a cultivated or educated human being, such as the term had previously held, but just the practices that happen to be definitive of a particular people. Now let me quote an excerpt from your piece that actually follows up on what you've just said. You said in your Globe piece, a culture in the anthropological sense is a way of life. The Samoans have theirs, the Asante theirs, and the Finns theirs. Multiculturalism then, if it meant anything, would mean many ways of life, coexisting in a single society. Does that really describe the situation in Canada today, you ask? And fortunately, we have you here to answer. How would you answer the question? No, it doesn't describe the situation in Canada today. Uh, Canada is a liberal democracy, and uh, it's implicit in my column that liberal democracy itself defines a kind of culture or way of life. Now, I fielded a lot of questions about that assertion, and I'd be the last to deny that there are significant differences um, from one liberal democracy to the next. But I would argue that liberal democracy comes very close to defining a way of life, and that once liberal democracy occupies the field, there isn't really room for a culture uh, in the anthropological sense of that term, uh, which in any significant sense is in conflict with liberal democracy. Liberal democracy comes so close to defining a way of life that the way of life in any liberal democracy has more in common, much more in common, with the way of life in any other liberal democracy than it does with the way of life in any country that's not a liberal democracy. But my hunch is if you ask the average Canadian, you know, what does multiculturalism mean? she would say something like, it's a respect and acceptance or a tolerance for the diverse cultures that we have in this country. That's okay, isn't it? Well, again, what do we mean, we mean by the diverse cultures that we have in this country? You know, at one time, Canadians spoke of biculturalism. Now, that was very important in the 60s. And that, of course, pointed to the fact that at one time, we really did have in Canada two clearly distinctive ways of life, the French and the English. And that's a fact about Canada. And of course, all Canadian discussions of multiculturalism are somehow in the shadow of that fact. Then there are the Aboriginal peoples. Right? And they, too, are a separate category, because they're not immigrants who came voluntarily to Canada, presumptively then to share in the Canadian way of life. They're peoples on whom the Canadian way of life encroached and who, whose own ancestral ways of life were destroyed as a result. So I think they're in a special category, too. But for everyone else, um, I would say that um, if there are multiple cultures in Canada, it's only in such an attenuated sense that really to apply the term cultures to them is misleading. Hmm. Misleading in what respect? Misleading in the sense that what we have, in fact, are the rump or the relics or the memories or the nostalgia for the residual practices of ways of life um, which no longer exist in their full vigor. And I'm going to give you a particular example, which I owe to a friend of mine, the late Howard Bratz, professor of sociology at McMaster, who was an early critic of multiculturalism, or early skeptic concerning it, who likened multiculturalism to an ethnic food fair, much like the caravan uh, that used to be held in Toronto each year. Sure. And he came up with a wonderful example. And that's the distinction between kosher food and kosher style food. <laughs> kosher food implies a whole way of life, right, uh, under rabbinic law. 
Whereas kosher style food is just one way of making a hot dog, you know, <laughs> which, which coexists easily with 20 other different ways of making sausages, you know, at the ethnic food fair. I get the distinction. And the multiculturalism is really all about kosher style. <laughs> okay, I haven't heard that one before. That's a good one. Uh, and here's another excerpt from your piece. In fact, we Canadians do have a way of life, you say. It's called liberal democracy. It offers us unprecedented freedom to live as we wish, and in this sense, it does indeed foster diversity. It does so, however, only on a condition of a far more significant underlying unity. For so long as you observe prevailing liberal de democratic norms on all fundamental social questions, you're free in merely secondary matters to continue in the ways of your ancestors. Okay, two different thoughts here, and I want to pick both of them apart. Uh, let's get some examples. Liberal democratic norms on fundamental social questions. You're referring to what here? Um, I'm referring to um, the basic civic responsibilities um, of any citizen in a liberal democracy, um, which imply um, you know, economic self-reliance, you know, every, everybody makes his own way, um, tolerance of others. Here, of course, the original model was religious toleration. We've extended that, if you like, to racial and cultural toleration. Um, and a certain kind of easygoingness, because everybody recognizes that the differences among citizens, you know, whether you want to understand those as religious differences, cultural differences, racial differences, whatever these differences may be, all must cede to these fundamental norms. Yeah? And my argument would be that the unity, um, the, 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 the common way of life defined by these norms, really does take precedence over the differences in a very significant way. So the, the most one would say of the differences is that they define various subcultures, you know, all parts of the same culture, the same culture, liberal democratic culture of personal choice, to which I mm -hmm. refer in the column. Well, let's compare and contrast then with the second part of that quote, which is the culturally diverse norms on secondary matters. You're referring there to what? Well, um, on the secondary matters, one is indeed free to live as one likes, and therefore one is free um, to um, maintain the ways of one's ancestors, or one is free to um, give up those ways. Um, that's entirely up to you. Um, certainly, uh, liberal democracy in its, uh, the, the guarantee of religious freedom in liberal democracy is obviously crucially important. Mm -hmm. One is free to remain a Christian or a Jew or a Sikh or a Hindu or a Muslim. But one must become, in the decisive respect, a liberal Jew, a liberal Christian, a liberal Hindu, or a liberal Muslim by um, giving up any notion of these as norms to which um, everyone in the society must, um, must, must submit, and norms which can enjoy any public status within the society. So is it your concern, then, that multiculturalism as a policy holds no single set of cultural practices that are foundational to this country? I think that that's indeed a problem with multiculturalism. I think that here one has to distinguish between different kinds of liberal of, of multiculturalism. There is what one might call liberal multiculturalism, which bears firmly in mind that these liberal norms, which are a certain development of Western civilization and which Western civilization alone produced, you know, for you know, various historical reasons which we could discuss, that those are the authoritative principles of the society. But there's also a kind of post-liberal, and one might even say anti-liberal, uh, version of multiculturalism, the so-called politics of difference, uh, which takes the cultural relativism, which is implicit in the cultural anthropological notion of, of culture very seriously, and wants a liberalism that no longer claims superiority for liberalism itself. You know, so that if we're really going to get over our ethnocentrism or our n immersion within our own narrow culture, we have to get over the notion you know, that liberal norms are superior to other norms. And we therefore have to come up with a strange kind of liberalism which is somehow equally hospitable of illiberal ways of life you know, as of liberal ones. You just want us to sort of be a little more blunt about the fact that the way we're doing it here is better than the way they did it over there. Is that, is, that, yes. is that getting closer to it? Yes, or, or to state it more practically, um, that to um, immigrate to Canada, and I speak here as someone who himself immigrated to Canada. From? <laughs> the United States. From where? Um, well, I grew up in Chicago. Okay. Um, 
that 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 you know that 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 to immigrate uh, to Canada um, is to come here to share in the um, Canadian way of life. Now, the Canadian way of life, as I've suggested, allows one a great deal of latitude um, in all kinds of matters, but not too much latitude. You're you're arguing. Well, that, that, that in the end, one does have to recognize that we do live in a certain kind of society that is defined by a certain way of life. All right, let me follow up on that, because let's do a real yeah. rubber hitting the road here kind of thing. Do you think that when people come here from, let's say, not Chicago, where the uh, adaptation is fairly easy, but you know, from India or Pakistan or you know, China, Nigeria, someplace like that, and they hear that Canada is a multicultural society, they believe that this country will tolerate their cultural practices, maybe even encourage their cultural practices from the old country. Do you think that they understand that that means embracing the liberal democracy that you're talking about and leaving the kind of extremist aspects of the old world behind? I think that most of them do. Um, the vast majority do. They come here precisely to leave the extremist aspects of the old world behind. Uh, so multiculturalism, it, as to the extent that I see multiculturalism as a problem, um, it actually is more a problem of elites, yeah? um, intellectual elites, including the intellectual elites sprung from the predominant um, you know, Canadian, Canadian ethnic groups, um, than, than, than it is of ordinary people. And you know, as, as, as is well known, various policies associated with official multiculturalism in Canada um, often elicit very divided responses, you know, from the groups um, that they're supposed to benefit. Let me, do you mind if I state what I think in a way is the, the, the real issue, you know, which connected with this, this politics of difference? Sure. The whole question of what difference has to expect from a liberal democracy, is it um, tolerance or is it recognition or affirmation? Mm. Because the more radical multiculturalism insists on um, affirmation or recognition of difference. That we're supposed to respect people because of their differences. That they can't be happy here. Not just respect, but accept. Well, yeah, respect um, being understood as something stronger than accept. Okay. You know, accept would just be in the realm of tolerance or toleration. Respect is in this realm of, of, of affirmation. Okay. Yeah. That we're somehow supposed to affirm these differences. I hear you on your concerns about multiculturalism and what it means today in, in this country at this time in our lives as citizens. But how about this as a, as a happy compromise on which to end? Multiculturalism plus our charter. Does that get where you want to go to? Uh, we'd have to discuss the charter some other time. <laughs> <laughs> the charter doesn't get exactly to where I'd like to go to, but we'll leave that aside. But multiculturalism plus the charter is a pretty good balance in a country, wouldn't you say? At the end of the article, I suggest that we celebrate shallow diversity. <laughs> now, yes. that statement might sound ironic, yeah. right? Because you'd think that since it's shallow, it's less worth celebrating. It would be more worth celebrating if it were deep or rich diversity. Mm -hmm. But again, my argument would be that the deeper and the richer diversity is, the truer it is, the more it actually is a matter of diverse ways of life, then the more problematic it becomes for a country which is committed to the one way of life the liberal democratic one. So celebrate so again, our shallow diversity. Celebrate our shallow diversity and be aware of the problems um, that are there in the, in the notion of multiculturalism. That seems like a good spot to leave it. Clifford Orwin, thanks a lot for visiting us from U of T today. We appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. <laughs>